This week we're going to be reading out of On the Banks of Plum Creek, written by Laura Ingalls Wilder and published in 1937. Chapter 20, titled School, is first. Laura wanted to sink down and hide her legs. Her dress was too short. It was much shorter than the town girls' dresses. So was Mary's. Before they came to Plum Creek, Ma had said that they were outgrowing those dresses. Their bare legs did look long and spindly, like Snipe's legs. I've worn pants that were too short, as well as dresses that were too short. I even accidentally have been sewing a skirt, and guess what? It's too short. So we'll go on over to the historical fashion area, and I will show you one of my works in progress. Next week, we're going to be going on a field trip to the Log Cabin Village, a historical site in Fort Worth. I'm going to be joined by 10 of my friends from the Dallas-Fort Worth Costuming Guild, and many of us have been making new dresses for the occasion. Because it's more of a rustic historical site, I decided to make a new work dress and the pattern that I'm currently working with is from an extant garment that would have been worn by women in the natural form era of the second bustle period. It covers approximately 1877 through 1881. Now, when women were starting to construct a garment, Fabric was so precious and expensive that they would do their first fittings in a very inexpensive fabric, perhaps um, something made from an old skirt, uh, and we call these mock-ups or muslins because they are often made from muslin fabric. And so you go ahead and sew it just as, as you would a regular garment. You put in your seaming and you know you try it on to make sure that it is going to be a good fit. And once you've determined that it does fit the way it is supposed to, then you go ahead and cut out your good fabric, your expensive fabric. Now this will not go to waste because actually I'm going to use my muslin as my lining. So I'll sew these together and then add the sleeves. And this was the skirt that I accidentally made too short. Um, this was a group of coordinating fabrics that I used to create my design and I thought that a half yard was going to be enough for the bottom ruffle. Well, even though work dresses were generally a bit shorter than a best dress, it was way above my ankles. So. I tried adding a row of lace. It still wasn't long enough. So then I added a row of eyelet and it finally just skims the ground perfectly. So I'll go ahead and take the camera um, off of the tripod and kind of give you a close-up look of what I'm talking about. Now, piecing things to make them fit is actually very historically accurate. So, 
I made the additional length look like it was intentional. And this would have been something that women would have done also on children's dresses. They would have added length when children outgrew their dresses. So Ma probably did that several times for Laura and Mary's dresses. I can't wait to show you the finished project at the event next week. For this week's craft, we're going to make a brown paper star garland. When Ma was first moving into the house in On the Banks of Plum Creek, she decided to ask Laura and Mary to create a paper garland to decorate the shelf above the stove. And to create the garland is very easy. I had a roll of brown paper, but you can also use brown paper garbage bags. You'll want to draw out your design with either a pencil or a Sharpie. If you want to be really exact in your lines, you can use a ruler, but it's not necessary. And then a pair of scissors to cut your design out. Now, historically, during the Victorian era, a decorative shelf edging or lace-like shelf edging was very popular and it was sold by various paper manufacturers and it's probably very likely that Ma would have seen an advertisement in one of her ladies' magazines. And so she just probably uh, took the design and made it her own. You'll want to cut a strip of paper and it can be as wide or as long as you want. For this garland, um, I opted to make it four inches wide and then however tall my um, roll of paper was, was the length. And you'll want to then fold your paper in an accordion shape. Do you see how that goes together? And that's why they call it the accordion shape. And then once you have your accordion shape, you're going to make your design. Now the important thing when you're making your star is that on either side of the folds, you'll want to leave that portion of the star attached. So don't cut through it. The top edges are fine, but in order to have them connected, you need to have the lines running off the paper. If you can kind of see on my drawing, I left a little bit of space. I'll take a close-up photograph of it and in the accompanying web post, I'll place the picture there. And the link, of course, will be in the description area below, as well as other links to sites that also have instructions for the paper garland. Now, if you by chance have a younger child who wants to create the project, a heart garland is a bit easier to draw as well as cut out. So that's an option too. So we're gonna do our star and you just cut. Again, the bottom is fine to cut through it. And I'll show you after this first snip, on one side, and it doesn't take very long at all, but see how they're somewhat wide right at the base of the point of the star. I didn't cut through the paper. And then we simply just do the other side. It goes together really quickly. So you could make an entire Christmas tree worth of garland 
in a very short time. All right. And then there's your garland. I pressed the other garland out just because the paper had been on the roll. It makes it a little bit curvy, but it's kind of fun to, to see that design as well as the paper that I ironed. Now, I also, when I was looking for the historical research for these papers, I was really curious what lace-like edging paper looked like, and it was very similar to this design. So I had some simple white computer paper, and I had this die-cut stamp that makes a little lace-like edging. And I just ran all of my paper through the edge. And I'm going to show you where I've hung this here at Storybook Cottage. Um, another thing that you could possibly try are if you have some of these big paper cutters, if you could arrange it that two of the edges don't go all the way through, you could create so many different and pretty designs. So leave me a comment below if you try the paper garland or if you have a question, um, you can also leave it in the comments and I will absolutely get back with you. But now I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod and I'll show you where I hung my shelf paper. I hung the decorative paper edging in our glass fronted cabinet. Each season I change out the decoration inside. Right now I have cozy cottages for fall and I thought that the one shelf would be so pretty with a bit of decorative paper edging. So that was a quick and fun update. I hope you enjoyed the project. Our next chapter is Town Party. A glossy white cloth covered the table. On it was a beautiful sugar white cake and tall glasses. I got the biggest piece, Nellie shouted, grabbing a big piece out of that cake. The others sat waiting till Mrs. Olson gave them their pieces. She put each piece on a china plate. Is your lemonade sweet enough? Mrs. Olson asked. So Laura knew that it was lemonade in the glasses. She had never tasted anything like it. At first it was sweet, but after she ate a bit of the sugar white off of her piece of cake, the lemonade was sour. But they all answered Miss Olson politely. Yes, thank you, ma'am. My husband and I are getting ready to attend a picnic with the Dallas-Fort Worth Costumers Guild this afternoon, and I thought it would be fun to pack along a thermos of homemade lemonade. So let's go get started. I had mentioned earlier that I'm going to be attending a picnic, and I wanted to take along a thermos of lemonade because it's really refreshing. Lemonade is very easy to make. You just need water, lemons, and sugar. Now, I've already gotten a bit of a start, as you can see, um, just for the essence of time. And lemonade is very much to what your taste is. So you can take the ratios that I provide and perhaps you'll may want it a bit sweeter or a bit sour, so alter it until it tastes good to you. 
and I began with eight cups of warm water. And the reason why it was warm is I then added four cups of white sugar and the warm water helps the sugar to, to dissolve more quickly. And then from there, you're going to add your lemon juice. Now for me, I have found that I like the juice of one lemon per one cup of water. So since I had eight cups of water, I needed eight lemons. And you can get your lemon juice in a wide variety of ways. You can squeeze it directly into your bowl. Um, you may have to scoop out some seeds. I actually have this juicer that I love and I use it quite often. And you just put your lemon right in there. Make sure your cup is right underneath and then you just push down. There's a little bit of resistance but not bad. And you can see that it really just gets every bit of the juice. Now the pioneers would not have thrown the rinds of their lemon away. You can add a little bit of salt and that will shine up your copper beautifully. Scrub your pots and pans, your sinks, your countertops. Lemon is actually a natural disinfectant and you can also use it to whiten your nails if you've gotten some paint on them or a stain. It's a natural, natural whitener. And if you have a disposal, if you'll put one or two of the rinds down into the disposal, it really um, helps to freshen it up so that it smells beautifully. Um, you can also put it into water and make uh, lemon vinegar, various lemon cleaners. Um, I'll put some links down below um, and in the post that I write in conjunction this week. So we just keep squeezing our lemons and then once all of the juice has been added to our sugar water, then you just stir and chill it well. It takes about oh, three hours for a eight cups of water to chill. So there is our final eight lemon. And I'm just gonna add that last little bit and stir it up. And I can't wait to take it to the picnic. I hope you'll make the recipe and enjoy. Garland can be any size that you would like. I cut a strip of paper that was four inches wide. I live next to a fire department. <laughs> How are we doing? How are we doing? Maybe pull it over. Is there less shadow? No, there is not. Yeah, I guess there is.